Hello there and welcome to my painting guide for Bretonian Men at Arms. Um, the colours are going to be black and red, kind of similar to what they've done in GW. Now I will be batch painting these guys so every step is for each model in that 18 man unit. I start things off by using some Abaddon Black to neaten up any areas the sprays missed but only on the um, areas that I intend to actually be black on the final model. After that I then start picking out some brown leather details with some Dryad Bark. And I did the same for weapon shafts as well. After that I use some iron hand steel to paint any areas that are going to be metallic. After the metal had been completed on all the miniatures I gave everything um, and the entire miniature a once over wash with some non oil. After leaving that to dry I then broke out the Corvus black and started to very subtly highlight any areas that I'd earmarked to be black on the miniatures. After the Corvus black I start to use Eshin grey just to do some edge highlights. Um, I don't like really sharp um, highlights on my miniatures when it comes to black so I thought I'd just uh, keep that black tone sort of quite dark. I then use Dryad bark to bring more of the actual colour back to all the brown areas. And then highlighted again with some Katachan flesh. I then use some Stormhost Silver to start highlighting all of the metal. Now the aim um, for this is for the metal to look a bit sort of darker and a bit um, grubby as these guys are peasants um, so they, they, they need to look a bit sort of uh, less than neat. I then used Gal Vorbach Red on uh, a lot of the pieces of the clothing that looked more sort of leathery as we're going to go for a, a red leather look on a lot of these guys. That was followed up by some corn red on uh, the items of clothing that were cloth. I also painted the uh, inside of the banner as well. I then painted their belts and any pouches dangling off that with some Rhinox hide. Finally, I gave everything I've just painted a quick wash with non oil. Once the wash was dry, I used some Word Bearers Red to start highlighting all the areas that are going to be a reddish leather. That was then followed up by some Doombill Brown on the edges of the leather. With a final Skag Brown highlight um, on the very peaks and tips. I then used some Corn Red to neaten up the areas of cloth that we'd previously painted. which was then followed up by a highlight of Wazdaka Red. I then used some Dryad Bark to highlight those pouches and belts, which was quickly followed up by some Gorthor Brown Edge Highlighting. All that's left now for the clothing are some bandages and a few miscellaneous items, so I've used some Rakar flesh just to add some extra lighter colours to the actual model. And all those areas we're giving a once over with some soft tone wash from Army Painter. Once the wash was dry I went ahead and added a second layer of Rakar flesh um, just to bring in all that lightness back in. Which was then edge highlighted with some Ushabdi bone. Now the clothing is all out of the way, I used Bugman's Glow to paint all of the flesh. Which was followed up with some Reitland Flesh Shade. While that was drying I painted the candles on the Monk. I used the exact same way as I did with the Rathgast Flesh, apart from I had an extra highlight with Screaming Skull. As that took no time at all, the flesh shade would still be wet, so I went ahead and started the shield pattern with some Mephiston Red in squares, 
be very careful with this and take your time. Don't worry too much if you make mistakes because you will be able to tidy up later when we do the black. As we're painting 18 people at once, the uh, wash had dried, so then I used Caddy and Flesh Tone to bulk out the main color. And that was followed up by a quick highlight of Kislev's Flesh on the knuckles and noses and area, any areas that kind of like stick out. Now you can skip this step if you want, as you can't really see the eyes on these guys, but I used a little bit of black just to uh, mark in where their eyes would be. And that was followed by a quick dash of white with a final dot of black to represent their pupil. Now the miniatures are mostly complete so I went ahead and used Evil Sun Scarlet to paint in the main colour of the shields, once again going over where I would previously painted. I then used Caroberg Crimson to do a recessed shade on the very edges of where I painted the red. I then used some Wild Rider Red just to paint down where the red and black meet. Abaddon Black was used next to neaten up all of those areas that may have got silver on it or some red if we went over. And that was very gently highlighted with some Corvus Black. I then used some Iron Hand Steel just to pick out all the studs on the leather armor. All that's left to do now is the details on the command. So I'm going to start things off by using some Retributor armor on the standard and the little statue carried around by the monk. Both of those items will then get a wash with some Reichland flesh shade. And while that dries, we'll move on to other details on the rest of the command. I use some Zandari dust on the tips of the drummer's sticks, as well as the ropes on the barrel of the monk. I then use Screaming Bell on the metal details on the barrel. And then gave all the areas we just painted a wash with some Agrax Earthshade. While that was drying, I used a tiny bit of Screamer Pink on any open mouths to represent the tongues. Followed by some matte white just to pick out any teeth. I then used Catachan Flesh to pick out hair on some of the uh, models that you could see the hair with. And that was given a wash with some Agrax Earthshade. My unit's champion has a big long moustache, so I thought I'd paint that white uh, using some grey sear to begin with. And I did the same for the monk. And the bird attached to my standard bearer's hat. While the paint was drying with those, I went ahead and re-layered um, some Retributor armor on all the gold just to neaten things up from the wash which was then followed up by Liberator Gold, just to give it a quick highlight. And continuing with the metals, I mixed in some Stormhost Silver to the Screaming Bell, just to lighten up that color, just to do a edge highlighting on the barrels and any other brass parts. Before finally using Stormhost Silver, just to highlight all those little gold areas, just on the very tips and crests. I then used Zandari dust to highlight the part of the cloth on the drummer's sticks. I then went and used matte white to highlight the areas of the mustache, the hair, and that bird. Everything's nearly finished, it's just the flames to do on the candle, so I started that with some dawn yellow, followed by some Avalanche sunset. I then mix some Fire Dragon Bright with both the Dawn Yellow and the Avalanche Sunset to get a third layer before just using Fire Dragon Bright on the very tips of the candles. And with that, we've finished all the painting, so it's time to move on to the base. For that, I use some Sterland Mud Technical Paint. After giving that plenty of time to dry, I went ahead and dry brushed the base with some Zandari Dust. I then painted all the rims with some dryad bark just to give them a bit of a more unified look. I then went ahead and added the transfers to each of the shields. Now if you want to know how I uh, add transfers, I've got a video up on YouTube um, already showing you how to do that. This next part is completely optional. I used some weathering powders, a nice brown muddy look to dirty up the bottom of the shields, their feet, and the bottom 
of their clothing. With the painting out of the way, all that's left to do is the basing. So I applied some PVA glue to the base and then applied some static grass using my little fufa. And there we are, that's the first 18 man men at arms Bretonian unit finished. I went for a more darker tone than I will do with the Bretonian knights because that way it represents that they're sort of more downtrodden and you can tell that they're peasantry. It will also help the knights stand out on the battlefield as well. It's been quite a lot of fun actually painting um, some really old tool stuff. I haven't done that in a very long time. Um, I hope you found this guide useful as well. Um, and if you'd like to see more, give us a subscribe and a thumbs up and I will uh, see you later. Goodbye for now.